Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This picture was lit with three lights, a flag and a small reflector. Setting up a shot which uses multiple lights can be tricky. But the techniques I used for this picture make it relatively simple to do. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so this is what I've got set up so far. I've put the subject on a piece of mount board on this table. This is mount board. It's just thin card, really, uh, usually white on one side. And I've got black on this one. OK, we'll come back to that bit a bit later. Right, so to set up this uh, multiple lighting shoot, what I'm going to do first of all is just compose the picture. So. Here I have my camera on this tripod, and on the front of the camera I have an 80mm lens. This is a medium format camera, so the equivalent for a full frame would be about a 50mm lens. Right, so just to compose the picture, what I want to do is just get this into something like the right place, a little bit higher, something like this. With that, I'll look through the viewfinder and we'll set it up. So I think I need to be just a bit closer. So I'm just going to move that into about there. And we'll just focus that up. About there should do. I'll just use the controls on the geared head here just to centre up the shot. There we go. OK. So this camera is tethered into Capture One software so that I can show the results as I go along and also control the camera. So I have all the camera settings on the computer here. So at the moment it's in full manual mode. I have a shutter speed of 125th of a second. Now that's the flash sync speed for this particular camera and the idea is that you want to use the fastest flash sync speed that you can to try and cut out as much of the ambient light. OK. I've got an ISO of 100 and an aperture at the moment of f8. So with those settings what I'll do is capture an image and I'll just check that I don't get any contamination from the house lights. There we go. And as you can see there, there's absolutely no image. I've got a tiny little highlight right in the middle of the screen, but that's it. So I'm happy with that. So now any light that I add will be the only light which will affect the subject. OK, so to start this uh, multiple lighting setup off, the first thing I'm going to do is just put a soft box around here somewhere. So this will be the light I'm going to use. And this has a three-foot octobox on the front of it. I'm just going to put it slightly up in the air like that. We'll just pop that about there. So in this position, most of the light is actually in front of the subject. And it's about one diameter of the light away from the subject, very roughly. So that's well within the scope of being used as a softbox. If this was further away, then it would start to become more of a point light source. So you can control the shadows by the distance that you have it away from the subject. OK, so with that in something like the right position, next thing to do would be just to grab an image. And I'm just going to use TTL metering in the camera just to get me in the right ballpark. There we go. So as you probably noticed, that fired twice. So the first time was to set the exposure, and the second time was to capture the image. And this is what we've ended up with. So it's reasonably lit, I suppose. The focus needs a little adjustment, which we can do shortly. As far as the first light is concerned, I think the uh, overall exposure needs to be dropped slightly. And that's the thing about multiple lighting setups it's best just to do one light at a time. So what I'm going to do is take one stop off the energy in this flash and we'll just grab that again. So I can do that from the camera control here. We'll just start up the flash control, select that light, and just take it down by one stop. There we go. 
With that set, I'll just grab that again. OK, so yes, that's coming along. This is the sort of lighting level that I want. So the next thing to do would just be to sort the focus out. And to do that, I'm just going to use Live View here. Make that a bit bigger. And if I zoom right in, I can use these controls now just to focus up the lens. So I'm focusing around here somewhere, which is where I think I need to be. Let's just have a look at the other camera. Not bad, I could probably afford to go backwards a little. There. OK, so with that done, I can get rid of live view. I'll just grab another image. And now if I zoom in here, yes, this is all looking very nice. OK. Right, so that's one light set. Now the next thing I'm going to do uh, isn't set a light, it's sort out the background. In the original image, you will have seen that we had a graduated background. Now that was achieved relatively simply, just with a piece of grey mount board, so grey card again, uh, white on one side, grey on the other, and I'm just going to put that on this stand. There we are. So this will give me a surface to create that graduated background on. So just to check it's in more or less the right place, I'll just use Live View again, and now I can just fine-tune the position of this just so that it's in the right place. There we go. So now that the background is in place, I'll just grab another image and we'll see what we get this time. OK, and I think you should be able to see that in this picture we have actually got the grey coming through on the background. Now that's because this light is illuminating not only the subject, but it's also throwing light onto the background. Not a great deal, but enough to contaminate it. So if we want this to go to very black at the edges, it's not going to do it if this is able to illuminate this surface. So what I need to do is just block this off, and I can do that just with a flag. OK, so this is a flag, basically just a piece of cloth, on a stand, Let's pop that up in the air a bit. We'll just get that in something like position, something like that. I want it relatively close to the light, but I don't want to affect the subject, and I don't want this in the side of the shot. So I'll just check that in the viewfinder and see if it's out of shot, which it is. So with that, I'll just grab another image and we'll see what we get this time. There we are. So that's now gone to a much more solid black. So this is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. So that light and that flag are now set. So now it's time to move on to the next light. So what I want to do is just place a light around here somewhere on this corner so I can just highlight any of the specular parts on the subject here. So here I've got another light on a stand. I'm just going to put this in here somewhere. Something like that. Pointing at the subject. Now I've got some barn doors on the front of this so I can control the uh, spread of the, the light a little. Um, so I think that should be about right as it is. So in order to test that, what I'm going to do is turn off this light and turn on this one. And once again, just to get me in the ballpark, I'm just going to use the TTL metering in the camera to initially set a uh, level for this light. So we'll grab an image. And there we are. So it's doing what I want. I can see the specular parts on the various bits of camera here. But I think overall it's going to be a little bright. OK, so the first thing to do will be to take it out of TTL uh, so that I can uh, have it in manual control and maybe take a stop off that. Let's start by taking one stop off it. OK, so I'll just use the flash control built into the camera. 
that light is selected so I'll take it out of TTL and we'll take a stop off okay so with that adjustment made we'll just grab an image and see what we get now yes that's taken it down a bit good so it's just left me with the specular bits that I wanted right so at this point it's probably a good idea just to turn both lights on and I'll grab an image and we'll see what we get there we are they both seem to be working together quite well the only thing is the front of the camera here is a little dull so just to fill that in I'm just going to use this card reflector just to recycle some of this light back onto the front of the camera there so if I just pop this in about here and with that in place I'll just grab an image and we'll see what we get there we are that seems to have worked so that's filled in all this area on the front of the camera and a little bit down the side of this one so this is what we had before and this is what we've got now okay so it just remains to add the uh, graduated glow in the background so to achieve that I'm just going to use this small flash head I'm just going to pop it at the back here pointing at the grey of the background there we are so just at an arbitrary energy level I'm just going to grab an image and we'll see what we get yes not bad it's possibly a little bright and it's also slightly in the wrong position because I can just see the edge of it here so I just need to move that and take off uh, possibly a couple of stops the other thing of course is that this is at the moment uh, just a white light source so I, in order to give it some colour I'm just going to add a gel to the front of that okay so with those changes made I'll grab another image we'll see what we get now okay so that's obviously an improvement uh, we've lost the light out of the background uh, but overall I still think this is a little bright so I'm going to take another stop off it and we're going to have another go so I can do that from the camera control here select that light we'll just take a stop off there we go yes that's more the sort of thing so this is what we had before and this is what we've got now okay so that's it for capturing the image uh, basically if you've got more than one light it's a very good idea just to set one up at a time turn the others off that way you can tell exactly what it's doing right so next thing to do would just be to import this into Photoshop and we'll just do the bare minimum of post-production okay so here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up the file of the image that I captured earlier I think the first thing that I want to do with this is just to globally uh, just change the color balance a little these are old cameras and I think the whole thing needs to be a little more aged so what I'm going to do is just go to image adjustments and just come down to color balance there we are and just starting with the midtones I'm just going to add a little yellow to that and maybe just take a bit of the magenta out I'm going to click on the preserve luminosity just to keep the overall exposure the same so we'll just do the same with the shadows just take a bit out these are quite sensitive so you do have to be a bit careful there we are so that's what we had before and that's what we've got now so I could go a little more I think there we are quite like that okay and I think I'd just like to just take the front of the image down a little uh, lots of different ways to do this I'm just going to add another layer then on this layer I'm just going to paint black so just make sure that black is selected as the foreground color grab a paintbrush make sure it's quite large like that. and 
we'll just wipe that across the front. So, and now I can just take the opacity down a little, just to make it a bit more controlled. There we are. And I'll just add an adjustment layer above that, and I'll just use a levels adjustment. I'll just make this a bit more punchy. Don't want to overdo it. There we are. And finally, I'll just go for a crop. Now I'm going to use this for video, so I'm using 16 by 9. Uh, and that's about right as it is, I think. So I'll just click on OK. And there we have it. So by setting one light at a time, it gives you a great deal of control over the illumination on the final image. So a multiple lighting setup need not be taxing. And I think overall, that's worked rather well. OK, well, I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.